In this video, we're going to create an Android app that I call Quick App Launcher. And we're going to use this app as an example of how you can create an app that goes to multiple screens. In the first example, we're going to be creating this second activity button, and that button will take you off of this screen and go to another screen. We're also going to be passing information from this screen to make the other screen just say hello world. The other button here called Google Search is going to determine whether or not this Android device has a browser and if it does have a browser show us google.com. So if I can demonstrate here we're going to click the second activity button and we made the text hello world appear on this second page. If I click the back button the other button called Google Search We'll first determine if the Android device has a browser, and then if it does, go to www.google.com. So if I click on that, it found our Google Chrome browser and went to that web page. So in this app, we're doing two things. We are uh, either switching screens within our app, or we're going to another screen outside of our app. Let's get started. The app that we're creating today is going to focus on two of the core elements to Android development. We're going to first focus on activities, and then we're also going to be focusing on intents. There's actually four core elements that you should grasp as we proceed forward here, so let me just quickly define what these are. You should think of an activity as a rectangular area that's going to display something. It's a very general thing, but a lot of people will think of it as the screen that they're on. But also, as you put things on the screen, a lot of those objects, like the buttons that I just showed you in the demonstration, those extend from the activity class. They, those buttons themselves are rectangular, and they display something. So uh, they too are activity objects. They're just more specifically buttons, uh, but they could be text views or whatever. So uh, the second thing is, what is an intent? Well, an intent is an action that's being requested or we want to have performed and it could either be just some part of a process that uh, we're trying to work out within our code or it could be a user interaction like a tap or a swipe. Let's say it's a tap or a swipe. Uh, an intent is going to be like a translator uh, translating that sign language so to speak into something that we want the Android device to perform. So think of it as a translator or a mediator that is going to say, here's what we want to have done. What is out there on the device that could do it for us? And that's where intent services and broadcast receivers come in. An intent service is something that might be able to perform the task that the intent is requesting to have done. And it could work on it in the background if necessary. That way our user interface is not being held up by performing those tasks. The user can still interact with the device while background tasks are being performed. And then a broadcast receiver would then send out a broadcast to the, the apps out there on the app that are running and say, hey, I'm done with this. Does anybody need to use it? So the original intent could say, oh, I, I want to process that information in some way, and then it could proceed forward. So that's how they all relate to one another. And today we're going to be focusing on an activity and an intent. We're going to build a second activity that one activity goes to the other. And also we're going to focus on, focus on having that activity launch another app out there on the Android device. All right, so now let's dive into actually creating it. To get started, let's click Start a New Android Studio Project. So we first need to give it a name, and I'm going to call it Quick Launcher. And the company name name doesn't matter until you start publishing your app. So uh, I'm just going to put mentorschools.org, and it's going to create package names that are in reverse uh, domain name notation. So it's going to say org.mentorschools.quicklauncher, and use that in our app. You can see that it added a number two down here to the project location automatically, and that's because I have my demo, my demo app already created that you saw earlier in the video. So let me just click Next, and this is the minimum uh, API level. In other words, the 
oldest level device that can use this app. So I'm just going to go with Lollipop Android 5.0 and then click Next. The uh, activity that we're going to use as our example is an empty activity. So we're going to select this one right here and just click Next. And the top box is the name of the Java class that it's going to create. Main activity.java is usually the starter activity of your apps. And the layout name, the layout name has to be in all lowercase. And if there's multiple words, it needs to be separated by underscores. That's the naming convention for layouts. Um, so we're just going to leave it as is and click finish. And this is going to take a minute to build. So uh, I'm going to show you when this thing comes up the two preferences that I usually set in my um, Android Studio projects. And once you set, set them, they're going to stay that way. So the first thing is if you go to Android Studio and select Preferences, I like to have the auto completion or auto import um, feature turned on. And this is going to be found under the editor category. And you're going to click general. And when you expand general, auto import is the very first option. And I have all of these boxes checked. And what that does is as soon as like it finds a class that is not imported into your Java, it will just do it. Uh, if there is two different classes that uh, you need to pick from, then then you're going to have to use your uh, import um, tool by just holding down Option and hitting Enter on a Mac, or um, I think it's Alt-Enter on a, on a PC. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that. And the second thing is you might want line numbers turned on, so I'm going to right-click in the gutter over here and then just turn on your line numbers right there. And that'll help you out throughout this. Okay, next up you can see uh, Android Studio has finally loaded. So the loading bar down here is all finished. And over here, you should have the Project Explorer open. Now, what I find is students sometimes uh, have it looking like this for whatever reason. And that's because the project folder is shrunk down. So make sure that uh, it's open here so we can examine it a little bit. And if it's not on Android right here, it could be on Project. And Project is how it is basically organized on disk. And Android is where you're pretty much going to leave it. So these are the files that are going to matter to you. Now, automatically, what you should have that popped up is two tabs, mainactivity.java and activitymain.xml, which shows you how it looks. The folders that you're going to interact with the most in this app at least is going to be in the Java folder. So we're going to interact with main activity here and this is where we where you can add more classes um, and more activities. And what also is important is the manifest up here. Every Android app needs to have a manifest that for instance specifies which activity to launch first. So here you can see that main activity is the first one that's going to get launched. It's a launcher activity. Uh, another file that you're going to interact with a lot is found under the resources folder, so that's abbreviated RES, and you'll see it under values, like for instance strings. This is where you should be putting all of the strings of your app so that it's better for internationalization of your app, and being able to translate the text into multiple languages. Um, but it's also an organizational thing. It helps you uh, organize all the text in one place rather than in several different classes. So just to show you the power of it, we can just change the name of our app from Quick Launcher to Quick App Launcher. And when I save that change, and then I go back to view it, you can see it pop to that change and it would change it everywhere because it's a reference. So this uh, ac action bar up here is referencing the text in the strings file. It's not actually you know, hand coded in. So that's nice. Uh, the same thing is true for the colors of the app. You can edit the colors of the app here. You can also add style sheets, but that's for a future video. 
Another folder that we would interact with later on is the drawable. What you would want to do is open this folder on disk and you can drag and drop uh, images into it and that is going to uh, Android Studio will automatically remember uh, the things that you put in there uh, and you can reference them directly. Alright, so to get started here, now that this is fully loaded and we've kind of gone over the project here, let's go ahead and add the buttons to our activitymain.xml. So in this portion of the video, we're going to handle the visual elements of our app here called Quick App Launcher, and I'm going to shrink down the Project Explorer for now. That'll give us a little bit more room on our screen. So we're not going to need this text view here, so I'm just going to select it and then push the delete key on my keyboard, and to, that's going to get rid of it. And we're going to drag two buttons on. All right, so I'm going to take one button out of the palette and drop it in here, and take another button out of the palette and drop it in here as well. So the first thing that I can do is we're going to select the top one, and we're going to name it Second Activity. So up here I'm going to call it Second Activity BTN, and I'm going to push Enter. A lot of times this is going to ask you, do you want to update the references to this button everywhere? And you're going to select Yes if it asks you that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the text of this. So let me scroll this down a little bit, and then you can see right here it says text. This is what it actually displays. So we're going to make this button go to another activity or another screen. So that's what it's going to say. Now I'm going to change this one down here as well. So this one with it selected, I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to change the ID of it to Google button or BTN and the text of it will simply say Google. Alright, now how do we align this stuff? So you'll see these little constraint buttons that are right next to it and for now what we're going to do is we're going to align these relative because the uh, device could be held in portrait mode or landscape mode which either looks like this in portrait or it's up and down or landscape which is side to side. So to maintain like a consistent lookout what we can do is we can just click and hold so that we get these little arrows and you can glue it to different sides. Now if you glue it to two sides equally here you can see I've got it glued to the right side and to the left side so it centers it. And if I glue it to the top and the bottom, it's going to center it vertically. Move this Google button out of the way. So that's one way that you could do it. Now I'm going to remove those constraints by just selecting the button and clicking this X, and then I'll actually get rid of them. And what I can do is maybe I wanted to have it centered vertically, or I'm sorry, horizontally like this, and I want this button to be relative to it as well. So I'm going to have it glued to the bottom of it. And then what you could do is you also have these options down here where you could take this and say center vertically in the parent. So this is going to put it down here, but it's this top line to the button that I had selected that's actually centered vertically. And you can offset it a little bit if you want. You can just click and drag it. And what's happening is it's setting some properties. If I could scroll up here that are a little offset so you can see like these are offset by five pixels right here vertically. The slider bar here should be at 50. This slider bar is horizontally so if I move this all the way to the right you can see this slide that way. Or that was to the left, I'm sorry. And then if I put it back, it's back in the middle. But what that does is if we change the device from portrait to landscape it's still relatively centered. All right, so that's different from being in absolute position. So let me go back to this, and uh, we'll develop from there. All right, now we also need another activity to go to. So how do we do that? Well, let me open up my Project Explorer again, and I'm going to expand out App, and then I'm going to expand out Java. And with the Java folder selected, you can make new activities. Now, if I want it to be in this package, 
I have to select that as well. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to select my first package, which actually has the main activity in it. And I'm going to right click, select new, and you'll have your activities down here. So uh, when you hover over activity, if you're making any one of these, you can just select them. We're going to be making an empty activity. But sometimes I you know, want to point out that you also have the gallery here, if you're not quite sure. And that brings up the same screen that you saw earlier in the video. And again, we're making an empty activity, so you can see that. And just click Next. And here it plugged in the package name that we had selected. So we had org.matterschools.quicklauncher selected. That's the package it's going to go into. Uh, the activity name, the top one here, is the Java name of the file. So we're going to call it second activity. And down here it's going to create the layout name. So this is the XML file that creates the layout. Now if I check this box, it could be a launcher activity that could be launched from within the app or outside of the app. I'm going to leave that unchecked and then click Finish. Okay, so it's building that right now and it should give us a blank second activity. I'm going to clear out some of these other tabs that I had open from earlier. And now I'm going to go to activity second.xml. And this should show us what it's going to look like. I'm going to shrink this down so we have more space. And we're just going to add one text view into this. So if I drag a text view into this, and then I'm just going to use these constraints to uh, glue it to the top and to the bottom. There's other ways to do this. But just to demonstrate once again, using those constraints, now it's centered in into the center of this screen. All right, now we have two activities. We have the main activity and the second activity. But these buttons don't do anything. So we're going to go over to mainactivity.java and add code to update these things. All right, so uh, first of all, let's go ahead and make a reference to the button that we created over in activity main. So we first have to reference that button from our code. How do we do that? So over in mainactivity.java, and again, if you don't have it open, let me go back to project. It should be under your Java folder and more than likely in the first package here called main activity. So you can reopen it right there. Okay, so let's create a button variable. So we're going to call this uh, button variable uh, second activity. And what that's going to point to is search for that button. So we're going to cast our search using a method called find view by ID. You're going to use this method a lot. So find view by ID takes an ID. And this I'm going to type R which is going to look in our resources. So R is the resources and what do we want to look by? Do we want to look by an ID, a string, whatever? Well we're going to search by ID. So I'm going to type ID and put another dot as a separator here. And I made a Google button and I made a second activity button. Well, of course, we want the second activity button. So I'm going to push tab to autocomplete and then add a semicolon at the end. And now I have a reference to that button. I can now use that reference called second activity uh, in here. And actually, I, what I should have done is I wanted to call this second activity BTN. Okay, so I just updated the name of that. All right, now um, what we can do is we can add a click listener to it. So to do that, I can say second activity button, or BTN, dot set on click listener. Now with this popping up right here, I would want to select this, all right? And then you can either do that with your mouse or just hit tab, all right? and that's going to auto-complete. Now within this we want to create a new uh, on-click listener. So how, how do we do that? Well new view, so within this view we want to set an on-click listener. Now see how it's popping up here? You want to get used to selecting this. So since it's highlighted in, in like a dark blue here, that's the one that I want. 
and I can use the IntelliJ IDE, IDE here to autocomplete that. So um, what you want to do here is as, as you're typing view dot on click listener, yeah, that's exactly what we want. So you want to use that autocomplete. Now over here you can see that this is now popping up and saying, do I want to implement the methods? Well, yes I do. Um, it's required that this onclick listener has an onclick event that it's overriding. So we're going to add that and it just pops in. So I'm saving myself a little bit of typing and I'm show you, showing you that. There's also keyboard shortcuts for that. Um, use the autocomplete as much as you can so that you save yourself from typos. Okay, so here now we're going to get to the point where uh, we're going to focus on an intent. So back at the beginning of this video, I said an intent is saying this is what we want to have happen, and Android is going to try to make that happen for us. So uh, we're going to create an intent object, and the name of this is going to be start intent. So that's our nickname for this variable. And what do we want to create? We want to create a brand new intent. Now, an intent is going to take an application context. They just want to know, okay, what is the context of this, this action? So when you start typing get, it's going to be the first option here called get application context. And again, we can autocomplete by pushing tab. And we're going to put, put in a comma. And then the next thing that we're going to be putting in here is what class do we want to create an object of? Well, we created this second activity class over here. So that's what we want. We want to go to that second activity screen. And that is an activity. So we have an intent and we have an activity and we're trying to link the two together. Um, I'm going to show you how to pass information to that set second screen or that second activity in a minute, but not first. So let's go ahead and just start this second activity and you can, there's a method called start intent and within that you have to just pass it an intent. Well the intent that we just created is called start intent and we're gonna fire it up and see what it does. So when we click this button um, I'm sorry, I just misspoke. We want start activity and uh, we want to pass it the intent. I'm sorry if I said that backwards. Okay, so uh, let's see what this does. I'm going to go ahead and push play and this is going to take a minute to build. Uh, but within your virtual device, uh, what we should see happen is the button will go to that second screen and display that text view. What we want to do to it is pass it some information that changes the text of the text view from text view to something else like hello world. And that's where, what we're going to put uh, on this line of code here in just a moment. But I want to show you the difference between the two. And this is going to take a moment uh, for it to load. Okay, so our button here now has an on-click listener. So uh, the on-click listener is going to say, hey, I have this intent. The user has interacted with this button. What do we want to do with it? Our intent is to go to this second activity. So go ahead and start that. That's really the only instructions we've given it. So I'm going to go ahead and click second activity. And here you can see it's got that second screen and it only says text view in here. So how do we send information from one screen to the next? Because a lot of times you might have a form and then on the next screen you have uh, to process that information in some way and display something. So um, I'm going to go ahead and shrink that down and this is how you do it. It's fairly simple. I'm going to replace this line right here, that comment, with 
start intent, which is the name of our intent, and we want to put some extra information in here. So put extra. And the way that this works is we can put a, as much extra information into like a little bundle that is sent to this other activity. And then that other activity can unbundle it and use that information. But it's done in key value pairs. So we have to give it a key, which is just the symbolic like I identifier of it and then also give it the value so we can look that up by its key. So what's typically done is you take your package name here like org.mentorschools.quicklauncher uh, and then you create uh, a name for it. So I'm going to call it something and then the next thing you give it is the actual value that you want to pass to the other screen. So I'm going to make it say, hello world in all caps and throw in an exclamation point. Okay, so now I can look up on the other screen using that key and uh, it's going to display hello world. So uh, let me go ahead and stop that and I'm going to go over to second activity and we're going to look to see if this activity was passed some extra information because uh, here's what could happen later on is you build these apps and instead of going straight to second activity or instead of going to main activity your app could actually launch into the second activity directly so there's a chance where it does get information and, or it doesn't. So here we can say if, oops, I still have my cap locks on, if, and we're going to check the intent of loading this second activity. If the intent has extra information, such as, and let's go ahead and go back to, I'm going to copy and paste this. Oops, wrong one. Just so I get the spelling exactly right, I'm going to copy that key, go over to second activity. So if it, if it has extra information that possesses that key, then do the following. So I'm going to create a little uh, if structure here, decision structure that uh, is going to change that text view. So we can reference that text view by creating a variable for it. So I'm going to call it TV for text view. What is that going to point to? Well, that points to the text view uh, that if we find the ID called r.id, and it was just text view because we didn't change it, then we can, I'm going to, for simplicity's sake, just create a new screen, a new string called text, which is going to get the intense uh, extra information get extras and get the string that has that key uh, and just store it as text. Oh, I didn't complete that so here I wanted to get, what do I wanted to get? I wanted to get the string with that key. Okay, now I'm going to just put text in that text view. So I can just say tv.setText with text. All right, so text view is the um, view that's sitting there in the middle of the activity. Text is going to hold a reference to whatever value that key has. And this line of code is going to go put that text in that text view. Simple. All right, so let me go ahead and push play again and launch my virtual device. Give that a minute to load up. And if you remember last time we clicked the button, all it said was text view. If everything goes well this time, it should say hello world. So I'm going to go ahead and click inside my activity to activate it and click this and here it changed the text. So we successfully passed information from this first screen when I click this button to second activity. So just to show you where that hello world came from, it came from here. We put some extra information in our intent, sent it on over. Alright, so 
Now, this is an example of how to launch another activity within our own app. So let me put in a little comment up here. Attempts to launch an activity within our own app. Next up, let's try to launch another app outside of our app that's on our Android device. So now our intent is different. We're going to attempt to launch an activity outside our app. So we can use some of the built-in uh, Android programs to uh, accomplish the tasks that we want to accomplish. So for instance, maybe we want to go have our app go to a certain web page uh, when they click a button. So let's do exactly what we did on these two lines, but we're going to name it a little differently. We're going to create a, a button variable, and it's going to be our Google button. And what this variable points to is uh, something that we're going to cast as a button. We're going to find the view by ID, and we're going to look in resources for an ID that is called Google button. All right, which it found it. So now we can go to the next line and add a click listener to it. So let's go to, let's add Google button, set on click listener. And uh, I want to set that up. So I'm going to type, I'm, I auto completed that. And you can do that with the tab or the enter key. And then we want to set a new view on click listener. See how it, it's already selected the second one? Yes, we want exactly that. So I'm going to hit tab. All right. When I hit tab, it's going to put in uh, that required information for on-click listener. On-click listener implements an on-click event, so it needs to have that. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to add extra space for readability. And let's say that we want it to go to a certain web address. Well, for readability, I'm going to uh, create a string called Google and it's going to hold this web address www.google.com all right so now we have to parse that as a uri so universal uh, resource identifier and uh, we have to give it a name so i'm going to call it web address and what is that well it's going to simply parse that string called google and hold that. Now we get back to our intents. So our intent is to uh, launch something on our Android device that can browse to that web page. So we're going to create an intent and we have to give that intent a name. So I'm going to call it go to Google. And what that's going to be is a brand new intent. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create an action view. All right, so uh, this is a different kind of intent. Instead of the context of our application, this is going to go outside of our application and launch that. Uh, what do we want it to do? We, we want to send it this web address to try to open up. Okay, so now here's the thing is with an intent, um, it's going to try to find, it's going to send out a broadcast that says, hey, is there any apps on this device that can do this action that's being requested of opening up this web address? And if the device answers back yes, then we can proceed forward that way. But if there are no uh, apps that respond back to this request, then we won't be able to do it. So we're going to need an if statement that checks to see if um, the response back was not null. In other words, the res they, we got a response back from this request saying, yeah, there's, a, there's an app on this device that can do this for us. So uh, I'm going to say, if go to Google can resolve uh, an activity that will be able to handle this request, then get the package manager and just make sure that it's not null. 
So that's what that means. So uh, in other words, if we got a list of, uh, of something that can actually perform this, then go ahead and give it that activity. So then we can actually start the activity called go to Google. All right, so let's see if it works. Let's go ahead and push play. And this should restart our emulator with our new code built into it. And down here, by the way, is the progress of that latest build. Okay, so we already know the first button works, so we're going to click the second button. And here it tested this and said, yes, something came back and said, I can open up that web address, which was our browser, and it went to google.com. Now, just to make sure that that wasn't um, just a trick or a magician's trick, we're going to try Yahoo and run that again. All right, so let's go ahead and push play. Here it's building. And up we come again. So I'm going to click Google, and this time I expect it to go to Yahoo. And here it did. It went to Yahoo. Okay, so that right there is an example of launching an activity within our own app and an activity outside our app. To finish up our video today, I'd like to cover the main ideas of what an activity and an intent is uh, that we brought up within this app. So an activity is simply a rectangular area that's going to display something. We often think of it as the screen that we're developing, but many of the uh, things that we're going to be putting on those screens actually extend from the activity class. Uh, so they are also rectangular areas like that text view that we made display hello world or the button that we clicked that launched our Google Chrome browser. So we put that code into an onCreate method and the reason why we put it there was because an activity goes through a life cycle of events and the first event in that life cycle is the onCreate method. So we're putting it there so that we can attach the listener events to listen for those clicks and also update any information if it uh, is past any information. So that was a good spot to put it in. But in a future video, we'll go through that life cycle. The other really important thing that we showed multiple times in this video was the find view by ID. You're going to use that method a lot to locate the resources in your activity. So you'll pass it a uh, resource.id or a resource.string, so it's r.id, r.string, r.layout, you'll see that a lot. The other thing that we did was we analyzed intent. The intent class represents some sort of action that you want to perform. And you can send and get information using intents. So if you want to move from one screen to the next, you could put extra information into your intent and we use the put extra to pass a, a key value pair. We could then retrieve that on the other screen by calling the get intent method and then getting the extras and then getting that particular string by giving it the key that we wanted to find out that it what its value was. And then lastly, we were able to launch other activities using the start activity method. 